All right, you guys have asked about 3D printed vehicles, right? Well, here's one, and here's the next person going to tell us all about it, and that's coming right up. Well, we're at the 2016 SAE World Congress in Detroit, and uh, I'm here with Scott Curran. He is an engineer, and he's going to tell us about 3D printing of vehicles, and he's just going to tell us all about it. Absolutely. So what you're seeing behind me is almost an entirely 3D printed vehicle made from an ABS plastic that's reinforced with carbon fiber. So Oak Ridge National Laboratory, in development with Cincinnati Incorporated, developed what's called a big area additive manufacturing process. So it's a, a very large 3D printer. Uh -huh. um, so a normal maker bot is, is pretty small. Right. So the, the big area additive manufacturing system that Oak Ridge developed has a workspace of about 20 foot by 14 foot by eight foot. It's obviously something large enough to, to produce a car this big. So all of what you're seeing on the body and the frame has been additively manufactured with this ABS plastic. Mm -hmm. And so what you'll see on the bottom of the frame is the actual layers where the extruded melted plastic has been layered one layer at a time. And to give you an idea of, of why we need this, this new technology, this big area additive technology, a, a print about the size of your microphone might take 10 to 14 hours with a smaller machine. The entire one piece frame on, on this printed utility vehicle only took 10 hours. So you're talking deposition rates of, of you know, 40 to 100 pounds per hour. Yeah. So it's, it's quite, quite fast. That is just fantastic. So uh, how long did it take to print the whole vehicle? About 20 hours of total print time altogether. And then once the individual parts are printed, we then integrate normal conventional powertrain components. So what you see now is a, a battery electric powertrain. It's a functioning vehicle and then it has a range extender on it. So there's an engine in the back. Mm -hmm. That engine only generates electricity to recharge a battery, and that's what we call a range extender. Right, okay. So we've seen that technology in other types of platforms too, and so you guys know what that's all about. Um, so now this particular vehicle kind of looks like a, um, like more of a sport utility or, or something. What would a vehicle like this typically be used for besides you know demonstrating the technology, I guess? So this is actually part of a bigger research project within Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Um, so it's, it's called the Additive Manufacturing Integrated Energy Project. So this printed utility vehicle has this electricity generator in the back. And so it can share electricity with a 3D printed house that we also created. Oh. So this, this, this vehicle is outfitted with wireless power transfer. And it, that wireless power transfer can go both ways. So the electricity that we generate in this vehicle, we can transmit wirelessly to a building. But if there's solar array on, on top of our 3D printed building, we can also recharge the batteries from this also wirelessly. Where do you see this type of technology going as we move forward? That might be kind of a simplistic statement, but what do you think? And it's a complicated answer. So we're a Department of Energy National Lab, so we're focused on energy research. So for us, being able to 3D print a design that has a, a lot of technology in it is very valuable for us to kind of do research into the state of the art for high efficiency vehicle powertrains. So for us, it's an extension of being able to rapidly prototype innovations and in energy research. For what it could mean for the industry, that's a great question. We're, we're, we're starting to see more and more 3D printing trickle in for parts that were normally not buildable mm -hmm. with conventional materials. Mm -hmm. um, what we'll see for, for more widespread um, 3D printed parts on vehicles, it's, it's a very exciting area. This is really great, all the technology and 3D printing and stuff, but at the end of the day, uh, here, here's a big question. How tough is this stuff? Uh, how durable is a vehicle like this? That's a great question. Um, so this is ABS plastic, so it's not a conventional engineering material. Um, we don't expect this vehicle to be driven on the road for thousands of miles. We have put it on a chassis dynamometer to measure fuel consumption. Uh -huh. um, its ability to print very fast also means it doesn't have the same strength and toughness as normal steels or even different carbon fiber polymers. So 
Not as tough as you would want it for a, a vehicle that was driving on the road, but tough enough to do really good research on. Right, I'm understanding that. But now I'm thinking that, okay, but if you were to use a tougher material, maybe slow it down, you could use the same type of uh, 3D printing, maybe technology and equipment too, right? And that's where our material science research is going to, is what's the next step for the being able to print engineering materials, including metals. Oh, that is really fantastic. Okay, so we're definitely going to stay tuned with this, right? So. All right, as we're moving forward, you've seen all and heard all the technology and, 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 and even metals. Oh man, this is going to get great, right?